looking at some uh, if effect of uh, economic development and rapid industrialization in Korea. And uh, one of the important aspects that we need to consider, I guess, is uh, the environment, environmental issue. Uh, but before that, uh, last week, uh, before uh, during the uh, discussion, I have uh, given a homework to students at Fudan. Do you remember? Yeah. Homework. <laughs> and I ask you, ask you to find out uh, what's the uh, okay. mother's age of first delivery. Remember uh, this table, this graph? Yeah. This in international yeah. Com comparison, and uh, uh, Mexico was very young, and uh, Korea was getting old and old. And did you find out some data on ch uh, China? Um, yeah. Yes, uh, okay. But, but I, I forget to <laughs> take it with me, so I can only remember a... Uh, uh, yeah, that's good. I, I can give you the... the Number? Exact one, but I can count it. Yes. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's almost uh, uh, thir thir 31. 31? Yeah, according to, uh, to 2011. Wow. So oldest, according to this, yeah. uh, I guess in this uh, graph, according to this data, uh, UK, was ranked number one, that is, they were the oldest mother when they had the first baby. And you're suggesting that uh, the China is actually older than that. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Oh, that's uh, quite uh, surprising. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you, where did you get the data? Um. A newspaper uh. called. Uh, yeah. I can translate it. So one of the newspapers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, e economic, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's quite interesting, and maybe I would uh, assume that there could be quite a big difference between uh, the mothers in urban area versus a rural community and uh, so uh, maybe when we go there uh, at Shanghai maybe you could give me some more uh, detailed information of uh, these numbers and maybe you could uh, uh, provide me with better I mean more uh, uh, detailed explanation of how this works okay but uh, thank you for uh, uh, doing your homework and come with uh, the number, okay? Uh, according to uh, Shen, uh, it's 30 about 31, okay? That's quite uh, fascinating, yeah. The, uh, regarding the environmental issue, uh, I will just focus on a couple of issues because it's wide range. There are wide range of issues, environmental issues, and uh, uh, air pollution. The uh, air pollution has been a big issue uh, in Korea. I think it was in the probably more important issue in the 1990s than now, uh, because we were able to have a better uh, quality of air, uh, especially the city of Seoul, and we had. Uh, various institutional arrangement to make uh, the clean air available to Koreans. Uh, but still the, the car uh, has been a major uh, uh, factor for deteriorating air condition, the quality of the air in Korea. And uh, the one uh, evidence that shows this uh, importance of the issue is, has been the number of cars where uh, people are getting rich and people are uh, one convenient and they're buying more cars and more cars. And of course, there has been stricter regulation about these uh, automobiles in terms of the pollution. So probably we are better uh, and also 
uh, a lot of bus now uses natural gas instead of diesel, so uh, it was kind of one factor that was has contributed to the t in improving the air quality in Korea. But still, you know, as as, as a sum, I think uh, automobile is a very important factor. And uh, uh, over the weekend, actually, I have done my homo my homework. Uh, that is, I look into China, uh, uh, the number of cars in China. Now it's uh, uh, about 63 million cars in China, and then it was it is expected to grow it to 75 million by early next year. So they are uh, using more cars, and uh, and it currently uh, it's about uh, the U.S. of course is number one in the world in terms of the number of cars. Uh, they said there are around uh, 250 million cars in uh, the U.S. Uh, and uh, because of the size of population and also because of the uh, rapid economic development in China, uh, China will be the number one in the world in terms of number of cars. And uh, eventually, <coughs> it is expected that uh, the car num aut number of automobiles could uh, be around 490 million in China. So it's, I mean, China uh, in, I guess, in all aspe aspects is a very important actor, you know, uh, in terms of economy, in terms of like uh, uh, geopolitics, in terms of uh, population, in terms of uh, uh, even environment, you know, uh, what, uh, how and what uh, do uh, the China Chinese do will be very important for the future of the world and for the future of the earth. Okay, the, uh, we have seen this table, right? Uh, so uh, there are a number of cities uh, in China which actually have serious air pollution problem, right? Uh, I hope uh, Shanghai is in much better condition, right? Uh, uh, as for Korea, uh, on the left, uh, we have uh, cities in Korea. I hope you have visited uh, most of them. Okay. Where is Seoul? Yeah, this is Seoul, yes. <laughs> Welcome to Korea. Uh, you can see that uh, Seoul uh, is, comparatively speaking, uh, in general, is uh, better in many aspects, right? Uh, uh, in terms of particular material, a little dust, uh, 58 uh, microgram per, uh, how do you say, with this, per, uh, uh, meter cubes, uh, meter cubes, okay, meter cubes, uh, it's kind of cube, right, yeah, meter cubes, yes. Uh, and it is getting better, uh, and uh, probably it would, I think it's probably much better uh, if you look at into the data of 2011. Okay, uh, Incheon, which is kind of very maybe big, uh, maybe global. It's tried to globalize. It's a big city, right? Uh, Incheon. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, it is getting better but still compared to Seoul uh, is not as good as Seoul in terms of PM10. Uh, Daegu, Daegu, uh, you know where Daegu is? Yeah, it's uh, in the south uh, eastern part, mid-south mid eastern part of Korea. And uh, it's important area politically, I guess, right? It will be very interesting to see uh, how uh, the TK or Daegu Gyeongbuk area will be uh, uh, voting for the present election on the 19th of December. Uh, probably it's quite predictable. I don't know. I mean, it would be interesting. Yeah. In Gwangju, uh, Gwangju is like uh, in the middle of, like of southwestern Korea. And uh, in terms of the uh, pollutants, you can see that it's much better than Seoul or Incheon or Busan. Or Tegu, right? Uh, PM uh, and uh, nitrogen oxides and also uh, sulfur oxides, it's much better uh, condition in terms of air quality. And actually, 
that represents that Gwangju probably is not as developed or industrialized as Daegu or Busan or Incheon. And that has been one of the major complaints of the uh, southwestern part of Korea. Okay, Gwangju and maybe Jeonju, well these are the cities in the southwestern part of Korea. And uh, there has been kind of regional uh, development in probably, uh, some people would even call it discrimination in terms of uh, investment. So southeastern part of Korea, that is Gyeongsangdo, Gyeongsangdo area, uh, was the probably major uh, industrial areas over the past 40, 50 years. Whereas southwestern part of Korea, uh, Jeollado, uh, actually Gwangju, Gwangju is located in, in the, at the center of southwestern part, is a pr very big city in southwestern part of Korea. But uh, in terms of industrialization <coughs> or industrial investment, it was uh, like, uh, comparatively speaking, uh, the, the amount invested was much less than southeastern part. So uh, in a sense, it was underdeveloped compared to southeastern part, which actually is reflected upon this data that is less development, less industrialization. Well maybe better envir environment. So it's kind of dilemma, I guess. Uh, but uh, uh, at least as I uh, use the term developmentalism, developmentalism, the idea that development is the good, the virtue, uh, has obsessed Koreans, I think, over the past 50 years. And uh, so uh, instead of enjoying good quality, good air quality or maybe better environment, uh, <coughs> most many Koreans have been wanting more development, more uh, industrialization and so on. And I think uh, nowadays, I guess, uh, there has been some change in this kind of attitude. Some people think that maybe quality of life or your lifestyle, uh, your fa time with your family is more important than economic development, industrialization, more money, more work. There's some shift, but in general I would say uh, still, developmentalism is the main uh, maybe uh, paradigm that uh, uh, dominates Korean society. And uh, the uh, in issues like environment uh, is probably second to the economic growth. Anyway, so Gwangju in that respect is blessed, but many would say, well, we need more uh, industrialization, the people in Jeollado area. Okay, Ulsan, for example, Ulsan is one of the industrial cities, uh, and you can see that since there are many factories in, in Ulsan area, many plants, in terms of the sulfur oxides, uh, on the very right uh, is the worst. Okay, so they it, it has to pay it had to pay for its industrialization and factories. Well, you know that uh, air pollution could be bad for your uh, 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 breathing and uh, asthma, bronchitis, lung cancer, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Automobile is the main one of the major f source. Uh, well, it brings us to the issue of maybe a global, even though we are Koreans, and uh, we are mostly concerned about what's happening in Korea, but actually at the same time, what we do affects the world, I guess. Uh, and actually what Chinese do in China affect the world, affects the world, uh, even more so, I guess, as for China, because it's a, such a big country and a lot of people. But anyway, uh, CO2, for example, what we do, that is, the cars that we drive or uh, maybe the factories that we uh, run uh, will uh, is emitting the carbon dioxide, which is one of the major greenhouse gas. And, uh, gas. So that even though we are not really the aware of it in everyday lives, it is uh, taking place. And uh, Korea is ranked number 10 in the world in energy-related CO2 emissions. So 
Korea is a small country, relatively, right? A uh, small country, both in terms of the size and also population. But as we know, uh, economically very dynamic. It's one of the, probably among the 10 nations in, in the world, top nations in terms of the trade and so on, uh, in, in this economic activities. And that is actually reflected upon the CO2. So we use a lot, of produce a lot of carbon dioxide. We use a lot of energy. We use a lot of, uh, especially fossil fuel and nuclear power. Nuclear power. Uh, per capita consumption uh, is about 4.43 TOE, that is ton of oil equivalent. We use different energies, right? Nuclear, gas, and uh, oil, and so on. And we kind of like uh, translate all together that into uh, oil. About we use 4.43 equivalent of oil per person. Every a lot of lot of energy, right? Uh, that uh, is compared to Japan, UK, or Germany. It shows that we use more energy per person, per person, right, in various forms. Well, uh, what we do here now actually affects the world. One index is global temperature. We know that there's this process of global warming right warming so uh, this is continuing continuing uh, and we need some uh, change I guess well uh, according to this uh, uh, table uh, we can read some uh, interesting things right uh, horizontal line shows kilowatt per capita per what, how much energy we use how much energy we use the vertical uh, line shows the income. So it's 2005, so it's not very out, up, updated, but according to 2005, uh, the vertical line is the income. You can see the general uh, trend of how uh, each individual in each country or person in the country uh, is located in terms of their energy consumption and income. On the very top right, which country is located there? Uh, upper right? USA, right? So what does this mean? Mm. Can you uh, interpret this for us? What do the Americans do with this? Hello. Can anyone uh, tell us what they're doing? Okay, so on this uh, vertical and horizontal. Okay, thanks. Uh, you always say. The graph is basically like the higher their GP GDP, the more energy they consume. Okay, yep. so uh, that means Americans are doing what? Americans are consuming more energy. <laughs> yeah, and, and also they earn? They earn the most, yeah. Okay. So, uh, right, uh, it's quite obvious, quite obvious, right? Uh, Americans are earning a lot because maybe on in terms of vertical line, right? And also they're using a lot of energy, right? But what about the Japanese? Japanese. It seems quite typical uh, pattern, right? If you earn more, probably you use a lot of energy. And maybe um, that's what exactly Americans are doing. They earn a lot of money, and also they consume a lot of energy. But uh, let's turn to the Japanese. They consume 
less energy but they achieve higher economic development. Right, right. Good. Very good interpretation, right? The Japanese, according to this data, they earn more than actually than the, Jap the Americans, but actually they consume much less energy per capita. So uh, not uh, everyone who earns a lot should use a lot of energy, right? There, there could be some ways that maybe you uh, earn a lot, but, but you use energy much, much efficiently, right? <coughs> exactly the same for maybe uh, – <coughs> Same kind of analysis could be used uh, for the Canadians, right, versus maybe Germans or UK or France, Europeans. That is, they earn similar income, but it seems Europeans are using energy much less, more efficient. Right? South Korea uh, is much less, earns much less than the UK or France or Germans, but we use as much energy as they do. So that, I mean, there should be some uh, way to improve this. That is, maybe, you know, uh, we should be doing something at the consumer's level or as some kind of energy system or uh, some kind of policies. Uh, you know, we uh, need to do some improve, make some improvement in terms of using energy. That's the whole point of this uh, graph. Uh, Uh, there was an issue about uh, the energy and air pollution and so on. Another, I mean, l let me quickly turn to another issue that is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear energy in Korea is being used widely and mostly for what? Nuclear energy is produced in order to provide what kind of service? Yes, electricity, yes, true. About uh, slightly less than 50% of our electricity comes from nuclear power. Okay. So, uh, but maybe you have heard there are many cases of uh, accident or small accident, they say small minor accidents and stopping of the nuclear power plants. Actually, uh, just today, I think it was Wolfsong, there was like there was a problem with the reactor that they had to like stop. It's like it's uh, it became like because uh, this particular reactor is about 30 years old, and it's you know usually 30 years is the maximum they're trying to extend the life uh, span of this particular reactor. Uh, and I think uh, more and more Koreans are concerned about this issue uh, because we think that there are alternatives, uh, and we think that. Nuclear power is not very cheap. The major reason that Korea has adopted nuclear power was because we thought we think that it's cheap. Uh, but uh, many began to question this assumption because uh, uh, it involves a lot of problems that in, in terms of even economy, economics, because. Uh, if you run a uh, re uh, reactor, you end up with some waste material. Okay. I was just wondering how, um, and you just mentioned it, um, how Korea deals with uh, toxic waste, with like the waste that's going to be produced. How are they dealing with? from uh, nuclear power plants. Yeah, I'm just wondering how they, what they're doing with it. Oh. <laughs> how do they do in Germany? I know there are some reactors, right? Yeah. Um, we put it into old salt mines, for example. Um, but now we have kind of a big problem because there's uh, lots of water coming in and it's, uh, supposed to maybe collapse and now we're thinking of how to get like all the, the, the barrels with the nuclear waste out of there again but it's like an I don't know really difficult task Germany is as I mean like a national referendum to 
start building a new pulp, nuclear pulp, or something like that? Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I don't want to get into too deep discussion of this issue, even though I have done a number of studies about uh, this issue. Uh, if you follow the uh, history of nuclear uh, power, one of the main issue at the civil society level has been where to locate the nuclear waste facility because you run the well, uh, okay, uh, this is the map of nuclear power plants. Uh, from top on the right, Gangneung, Samcheok, Uljin, Uljin, Gyeongju, Walsong, Gori, Yongguang. See, and there, are, uh, the react, uh, the this, <coughs> where the dots are, red dots and green dots. These are where the nuclear power reactors are located. Okay. Uh, we have been uh, generating electricity. Since I think uh, uh, 19 since 1970, mid 1970s, mid 1970s, and the first one was in Kuri, Kuri. Uh, it's like uh, southwestern part of because uh, of Korea, and because uh, you can see that all these reactors and power plants are located on the seashore because of the cooling. It needs to cool down the reactor use a lot of seawater, okay? And um, and also, you'll find that these villages or towns are, uh, the population is very low, okay? Because uh, if it's a populated area, the people will, you know, fight against it, or they wouldn't want this. Even though they want electricity, they don't want the power plants, right? So the government has been searching certain sites where uh, a number of the villagers are very small. So they can actually, I mean, of course, and also they would provide some uh, financial reward for this kind of uh, location. Um, so we have uh, quite a number, uh, 20 reactors running now. The problem with this uh, nuclear power uh, energy is they come up, they un end up with uh, toxic material, the uh, nuclear uh, the waste, which would uh, affect the human health for maybe hundreds of years, hundreds of years, because uh, the, react, uh, the uh, radioactive material will uh, be continued to uh, affect the environment and the human health. Uh, so what to do with uh, the uh, nuclear waste have been the major issue from the government perspective. And they wanted to find a location for nuclear waste storage. They wanted a certain place in Korea. Uh, they have tried to build permanent storage in some part of Korea for 30 years, in vain, they failed. They uh, they tried to build one in, I think, Sam Samchok, they want to build in one in Amyondo, and they want to build one in Buan, and so on. Uh, but uh, no community would want this, even though the government said, well, we'll provide you with a lot of money and like uh, invest a lot of infrastructures and so on. But uh, People said, well, you know, uh, we don't want it, okay? And then uh, I think it was, uh, uh, so I did a survey uh, in 2000, uh, was mid-2000, when the government wanted to build uh, the uh, facility, nuclear waste facility in Buan, the southwestern part of Korea. Uh, but it was a major, there was a major, uh, even though the the uh, Gunsu or the, uh, Governor of the uh, the uh, the county wanted, and he, he actually, he actually replied to the government that, that we want to invite the uh, facility, 
but local people were very angry and it de was almost developed into a kind of uh, war uh, in, th in this area. So uh, it was about, uh, there was like four or five months of struggle by the local people and um, even many kids said that we don't want this, they were on the street and so on. And so it was then when I uh, visited this community for a uh, number of times to uh, do a survey and actually interview the local people and uh, the whole community was really in a major uh, chaos in that particular period. But eventually, uh, because of this very strong resistance by the people, the government has to kind of withdraw. And then uh, next year, they had uh, new forms of uh, selecting uh, the nuclear facility, waste facility. But it says, well, uh, we will provide you a lot of money. It's more, much more money than, I think it was like some ton of one, uh, three, uh, 300, uh, some ton of one. million, billion, trillion, right? Three, two, three two trillion won uh, as initial compensation for this. Uh, and then uh, they said, we would uh, give you uh, a certain percentage of the fee that was paid, that is paid by the nuclear power plants. So each month that the community will get some money. Uh, according to the amount of the waste that coming in to this particular location. So there was kind of like, uh, it became quite a popular issue for the very underdeveloped communities in Korea. And actually it ended up uh, in uh, Gyeongju. Gyeongju. Yes, uh, so eventually uh, this waste facility, uh, it was the first uh, nuclear waste facility in Korea uh, was finally uh, decided, uh, I think a few years ago, and then the location is now Gyeongju, nearby Gyeongju, which is actually capital of uh, Silla, of the old dynasty, and uh, near the, uh, uh, where the, uh, Walsong uh, reactor is located actually. Uh, so it's a very poor community, uh, very uh, aged uh, fishermen live there and so on. So uh, a socially marginalized group and they uh, feel that uh, if the money invested in this community and uh, in if uh, that could be good for their economy. So finally uh, the issue has been resolved. But uh, so it now it's there in the middle of the building, a uh, building there. Uh, nuclear waste uh, facility in Gyeongju area. Uh, and then we have more, we have plans to build more, uh, more uh, uh, nuclear reactor uh, for the future. They say, well, this is good. Uh, and uh, President Lee Myung Bak has been very, uh, it's a very, he's a proponent of nuclear power. Uh, But this is uh, a map of uh, nuclear po commercial nuclear power, uh, power nuclear power countries, and uh, of course South Korea uh, is dark uh, green, which means that we are building new plants. We have st we already have a lot of uh, nuclear power plants, and we want to be build more, build more. Uh, there is only one uh, nuclear free area uh, that's on the very right bottom, bottom right. Where is, what's the name of this country? New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah, I was there. Uh, it was a beautiful country. It was like just, just lovely country with great nature. And uh, it's good that they uh, have declared that they would not, never have nuclear power. Uh, some European countries uh, very intense in terms of nuclear power, especially France, I think, uh, 
And uh, but uh, I think Germany uh, is kind of like uh, more progressive, and they try to reduce the number of nuclear, close down the nuclear power plants. Uh, top 10 nuclear countries uh, in the world, USA, because it's a big country, yeah. France, Japan, Russia, Germany, Korea. So even though we are not that big in terms of the nuclear power, we are quite big, big, right? And also, at the very bottom, uh, uh, it's a, another way of presenting this uh, data about nuclear power. There is kilowatt nuclear, p the energy generated by nuclear power, the kilowatt per hectare. Okay, because nuclear uh, radioactive material, for example, uh, affects geographically. It's kind of a prim it's kind of spread to the d other areas. So, like, uh, uh, if the uh, uh, the size is big, the effect will be kind of diluted. Whereas, you know countries like Korea, which is very small in terms of size, and we have many reactors, if if something happens that would could directly uh, what happens in uh, Jeollado area could actually affect the big cities in uh, Seoul or Gyeonggi-do and so on. So this is one way of uh, assessing the potential risk of nuclear uh, accident, if you will. South Korea, South Korea, Japan, actually it's a very highly uh, dense population with small land and if something happens, something like what happened in Fukushima happens, that could be a major disaster. It could be, it could affect uh, the people uh, much as seriously than in maybe the US or uh, Canada where they have like big, big uh, land. So per uh, kilowatt per hectare, in terms of new capacity, Korea ranks number one, okay, 9.93. Uh, uh, and then Japan, Germany, UK, and so on. So Korea and Japan are the two countries where I when if something happens, that could really be a disaster for the people. And uh, uh, even compared to Japan, Korea is much, much densely uh, Populated in terms of nuke, nuke power, uh, so um, that kind of shows that uh, this could be uh, quite bad in Korea. Yeah. And one another way of looking at nuclear power is like social justice perspective. That is, uh, the current elect uh, current system of power generation in Korea is very large scale uh, power plants in remote areas. So we have big nuclear power plants far away, okay, as you can see in the map, right? It's very far from Seoul, this uh, Uljin, Walsung, uh, Gori, Yeonggwang, right? But most of the electricity is actually used in Seoul and metropolitan area. So in a sense, the danger, potential danger or risk of nuclear power plants are being uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the burden of the local communities in poor and depopulated area. But the benefit is actually goes to the people in these big cities, okay? So uh, for example, uh, Seoul produces, there is some small uh, power plants, uh, fossil fuel, using, fossil, uh, using coal, 1.1 million megawatts, but they use 33 million megawatts, megawatts of electricity. Okay. Big, big gap. So where do these 32 million megawatts come from? Well, other part. That's from Walsung, Yeonggwang, and so on. These uh, remote areas uh, in uh, Southeast Korea and Southwest Korea, right? Busan, Busan is a big city. Uh, they produce. That's because they have this uh, 
nuclear power plants in uh, Korea. And uh, whereas maybe uh, uh, regions like uh, Jeonnam or for example, you see the Jeonnam Jeonnam, Jeollanamdo, which is southwestern part of Korea, it's relatively so-called underdeveloped uh, area. They produce a lot of electricity, more than 38 million megawatts. They consume only less than half of what they produce. That means that they actually the electricity goes to the big cities. So this uh, kind of imbalance between the production and consumption, the regional. Uh, uh, consumption and production shows that our current power plant uh, system, power generating system, is not very fair. It's not very fair. Uh, and uh, so, and also, uh, again, going back to this uh, nuclear power or radioactive uh, waste is also concentrated in the small town in southeastern part of Korea. So uh, we, urban middle class, enjoy the electricity uh, uh, and then the, the cost or the uh, potential danger uh, falls onto the you know, hands of uh, the poor in uh, other parts of so Korea. So it's kind of like it's a regional issue and social justice issue. Well, some pictures, you know, Chernobyl in 1986, right? Uh, was a major issue uh, in Europe, but also not only in Europe but also in Korea. You know, people were concerned that uh, the radioactive material can spread all over the world. Fukushima, of course, you probably vividly remember what happened. It was, a, I think, uh, it really hit the whole population of Japan. I think uh, I have uh, a couple of. Uh, Japanese uh, research, researchers who have been like working together and uh, quite uh, they uh, very frankly confess that it's quite depressing uh, to uh, live in Japan and uh, one of my friends who has worked at uh, Chiba University uh, and uh, she uh, actually uh, she's really concerned about the health of her child so uh, she asked her mother who lived in nearby uh, Kyoto, southwestern part of uh, Japan, uh, and Kobe, to send uh, like uh, vegetables and fruits from there because at least she want her to, she want to feed her baby, child, child some good food, uh, some safe food. So the food that is produced in the southwestern part, Kyoto or Kobe, is much regarded as with much less uh, radioactive material. So uh, they at least buy some good food, some expensive food, uh, only to feed her ch child, but uh, not for her or her husband, right? It's like we already, like, we have lived already enough, so maybe, but at least try to give uh, the baby, the child, uh, better food and maybe health. So it's quite, I mean, as a whole society, I think it's a major, it has a affected uh, many uh, Japanese. So uh, this is kind of message to Koreans and as well as to China because I know that China is also very much interested in like uh, building new nuclear power plants uh, and uh, I think we should take this lesson that has provided by the Japanese very seriously and uh, talk about um, more sustainable energy. So what are the alternatives? Uh, let me throw this very simple question to you. Do you have some discussion in China about like uh, uh, alternative energy or uh, green energy or uh, in China? Um, uh, solar energy. Yes. Okay. Uh, tide energy, wind energy, and mm -hmm. um, yes. <coughs> yeah, I think yeah, th that th those are very important future. I mean. Uh, 
I know that it's not really future energy. It's like many, many countries, uh, especially many European countries, have already uh, are they're using a lot of uh, uh, non-fossil fuel, uh, non-nuclear energies. And it's about in Germany, I think uh, the uh, the percentage of so-called uh, sustainable energies is about twenty percent. That's uh, that's what I heard uh, read recently. Uh, so uh, there is, and also big uh, energy companies, even of uh, oil companies like Shell, is investing a lot of money in like uh, solar energy. And actually, solar energy has become very quite quite popular in Korea as well. So some uh, local provinces are actually building a lot of solar panel to get a uh, better source of energy than uh, fossil fuel. So um, I think uh, solar, wind, and so on are the uh, and technology is already there and could be somewhat expensive, but it's considering the extra cost of nuclear power because, oh, I forgot to kind of add when I was, when I got some questions from Tilo, I forgot to mention <laughs> that uh, nuclear power is not very cheap, okay, because, because uh, nuclear power is not very cheap because of many factors. First, of that has not been considered when building nuclear power plants in the 1970s in Korea. Number one, number one, nuclear waste facility. The nuclear, the, the nuclear waste facility should be kept and monitored and well managed for maybe hundreds of years, hundreds of years, okay? And also, when the nuclear reactor is closed down, after 30 years or 40 years, they also should be well monitored and managed for maybe hundreds of years. So this kind of like cost was not well uh, integrated when they were you know, uh, assessing the cost of nuclear power. And another very important factor has been so-called uh, persuasion cost. They used the term persuading and PR. That is, there has been growing concern by the people about nuclear power. Okay? So what the government has been doing is that they use a lot of money to tell the people that it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. But many people kind of like are still concerned and they don't really trust. So uh, astronomical amount of money have been put into this kind of PR uh, telling the people that nuclear power is safe and clean and future energies of Korea. And uh, that causes us a lot, uh, so much. So uh, if you consider all these factors, uh, you cannot really uh, say that nuclear power is cheaper than other source of energy. Okay. Uh, Let's take uh, a seven minute break and then come back and talk about a wholly different issue, okay? Before we go into some concepts, I think uh, probably uh, these are a little survey that I like to do uh, and also compare this data among yourselves and also with the survey result that is presented uh, in our textbook. So we have three questions. Uh, and uh, what you have to do is to, to do a very quick survey of th these three questions and calculate the mean for your group. So uh, for example, there are three questions. Married people are generally happier than unmarried people uh, strongly disagree will be one point, and if you strongly agree, that will be five points. Okay, and also same goes for the second question. It is all right for a couple to live together without intending to get married. Question number three, people who want children ought to get married. So if you strongly disagree, that will be one. If you strongly agree for, I for each question, you say strongly agree and five points, okay? So, uh,
Hmm. As for you, uh, you probably would consider yourself a uh, Korean, Korean Chinese, Chinese Korean, okay, you lived, okay, and uh, Jehi, would you consider yourself, I know you have dual nationality and dual identity, and uh, probably since you have lived in uh, the U.S. since nine years old, right, you probably, uh, yeah, probably group yourself to this group number one, okay? And why don't you, yeah. So let's quickly do this and do a small calculation, a little calculation of the average, you know, to see how. Hmm. Maybe Sonic would like to be the uh, the collector of the survey result. What do you have in jail? Get Joe. So this will be a little experiment. You uh, can get you can. Maybe it's probably more efficient that in this group you'll be the leader. So you'll be kind of like collect the survey and they quickly calculate the mean. And then we can make an average of. Uh, two different uh, Korean groups. Yeah, 이렇게 이렇게 한 팀이 돼서 일단 평균을 계산해 주세요. Group number one, group number two. Uh, Korean group number one, Korean group number two. Uh, probably you come here over here as well. Yeah. 항목마다 평균이 나와야죠. As, uh, do you understand my <laughs> assignment? For each question. So as for question number one, each student in China, Fudan, will answer to this question number one. Say question, as for question number one, say that, uh, for example, Let's say uh, Unji, say three, that's like neutral. And then uh, Hyunju would say neutral. And maybe uh, uh, Dan Lei, say five, right? You sum this, you will get 11 point and then divide it by three and you have the average for question number one. So you get uh, maybe it's 3.9 or something like that, okay? And as for question number two, you do the same. If you strongly agree, you will get five plus five plus five, 15, and then divided by three, you will get five, okay? As that goes for each team, each group, Probably it would be more efficient to ask one question and then you kind of add up the points for w question number one, then divide by, num if you have, uh, since you have five, right, five divided by five, yeah. The first question. Yeah, you get mean for each question. Okay. Yeah. Married couple people and then, then question number two. You essay? Okay. 각 문항에 대해서 그 점수를 쭉 합산해서 전체 그 팀원수로 나누면 되죠. 네. 
Okay, the result. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. China, uh, have you you're done with it, right? As for uh, question number one, what's the score? What's the mean? Uh, to give you the av average score. Question number one. Average or the sum? Uh, can you speak up? Three. Three. Three point zero? Yeah. Two point two point six. Two point six. And the last question um, number three. Three point three. Three point three. Okay. And three point six. Hmm? Okay. Uh, the first one is the two point six. I'm sorry, okay. The first one is the two point six. Two point six. And the second one is three point three. Three point three. And the third one is three point six. Three point six. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, as for international group, um, two point six. Mm. Three point eight. Two point four. Wow. Okay. Uh, if you have the textbook, please turn to the textbook, uh, the article that you are supposed to read uh, for this issue. Please turn to page 153. 153. Exactly same questions were asked to Koreans uh, and the uh, respondents in other countries of the world. The figure three on page 153 shows uh, the result of the survey to the first question. To the first question, that is, uh, married people are generally happier, happier than unmarried people. And the average for Koreans in 2003 in this survey was around 3.6, 3.6, probably group two. Group two uh, is uh, kind of similar to the survey that was done in 2005 in Korea, okay? And according to this survey, this uh, a comparative result survey, the mean for the uh, for this question, for uh, Britain or the UK, it was around like 2.9, 2.8 something, which is, I guess, similar to the international group in this classroom. Okay, and uh, 
the score was very high. Uh, Korea and the Philippines actually was similar at around 3.6 for this particular question. Particular question, according to the state uh, table. And uh, in this particular table, there is no data for China, but according to s uh, three respondents in China, uh, was the lowest, right? International group and Chinese were similar. So that means, uh, according to this national survey or international comparison of this, this survey, uh, Koreans tend to think, tend to agree to the question number one more than most people in the world. That is, we Koreans think that married people are generally happier than unmarried people, okay? So it looks like the group number two in Korea supports this statement, whereas maybe the international group and Chinese group do not really think that it's very, very important. It's like the uh, highest score is five and uh, average could be around like uh, three, right? Five plus one divided by two, three. And Koreans tend to think more positively for this statement that marriage is very important for the happiness and the married man, married man or woman is happier than non-married man and female. Hmm. My question would be, uh, why Chinese uh, have Chinese group has such a low score for this particular question? Any uh, thoughts about this? Uh, can you uh, respond to my question, the, the ones who actually responded to this question? Uh. Um, in fact, we are not Chinese group. They are both Korean. <laughs> 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 okay. That's a good point, yes. Yeah. That's um, what I thought, yeah. yeah. But there's another, because I think there is another variable, very important variable, that should be considered in inter interpreting this uh, survey result. And that is, so one factor is nationality. And you mentioned that, Shan, that uh, uh, you're not really like, two of them are Chinese. So, one nation so nationality is one variable that this data has been kind of regrouped or has been grouped. But another factor that I think we need to consider is looks like all of you are in terms of gender how pardon in terms of gender what are you uh. <laughs> <laughs> so gender i think could be a very important factor right uh. all three of you yeah, one is Chinese, two are uh, Koreans, but all of you are actually females. And I don't know, I mean, maybe th this gender could be a very important variable in uh, responding to uh, this question. What do you think? So my uh, hypothesis is that maybe gender plays a very important role and maybe uh, both Females in China and Korea uh, tend to think that uh, marriage, from a female's perspective, is not such a very such an important factor for happiness. Or maybe marriage could be, especially in East Asian culture, maybe marriage is not very positive factor for uh, females. What do you think, I mean? I mean, this is my uh, hypothesis, and I would like to hear your uh, thought about that. Thought about that, yeah. 
I don't quite agree with okay, you. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Yes, that's very good. Yes. So why do why you don't agree with uh, my uh, hypothesis? Uh, um, I I think uh, chi Chinese people, uh, Chinese women, um, especially consider marriage equals to okay. happiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's why um, they uh, they uh, pay great mm. effort to find a good husband so mm. that they mm. may be happy in their okay. rest of life. So uh, uh, may I ask? I mean, usually in a normal survey, you would ask for this specific information. You would have to like respect anonymity, anonymity, but this is not really survey. So let me ask, uh, what was your opinion? Uh, what uh, point did you give for this question? Question number one. Uh, Chen. Uh, uh, um, two. Two. Hmm. That's against your hypothesis then. You did. You, Part, you you gave only two for this question. Yeah. So you don't think that uh, married people are generally happier than unmarried people. You don't. You uh, kind of disagree, right? Yeah. Hmm. That's against your own theory. Because I thought that maybe, uh, based on your explanation, uh, of how Chinese appreciate the marriage, then maybe I would think that uh, Chinese students would answer very positively on this question, whereas uh, maybe Korean students would uh, say very negatively, very give ma very low points. But uh, so I thought that you gave five and then the rest of the Koreans gave uh, two, but uh, you, you said that you gave two, which means that you don't think that marriage is that important for happiness. So it's kind of contradictory. Uh, uh, because I'm I'm not not that kind of woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh <laughs> all right. So you're not like average Chinese woman. You're very special. I know that you're very special. I, I met you in Shanghai the other day, and I knew that you're very, <laughs> yeah, you're not that kind of woman. And, uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, well, that's very difficult to interpret. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, maybe you can say that the sample size is so small, so it's like because usually the statistics uh, make sense w when you have like a uh, hundred and more than at least more than hundred uh, sample sizes. So you have kind of uh, you can see very general uh, trend of a particular group. You're not really interested in like one uh, in individual's peculiarity. But th as for uh, this case, this survey, uh, the sample size was, was only three, and you uh, consist of one third of the total population in your survey. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you are not that kind of woman, so you <laughs> you kind of like. Uh, you don't really represent, I mean, it's difficult to read from three sample size, the whole, uh, like, uh, kind of, like, uh, you don't really, your group does not really represent the Chinese women. Let's, let me put it that way. So, uh, I guess <laughs> that kind of sample, uh, the limit with the sample kind of uh, explains a very low uh, kind of uh, maybe untypical of Chinese uh, group. Okay, but anyway, it was interesting that uh, three of you do not really support, uh, support, agree with this statement number one. Uh, and it uh, uh, looks like uh, international group in general uh, tend to think that marriage, uh, can anyone kind of like give maybe short uh, interpretation, your view of uh, your group's uh, understanding of evaluation of marriage? Uh, 
You're not that kind of man, so. <laughs> I just don't really see why uh, married people should be happier than unmarried people. I don't see any point. I mean, they, I don't know, they get married and then what, what changes? I, I, I have no idea, so I don't think this is like an important factor for happiness, in my view. Um, yeah, no, no, I totally agree with Tilo. I think that there's a lot of pressure to get married, mainly for legal reasons, and it's like in a form of like stratification, and to um, a lot of people feel pressure because it kind of it's the social norms of things. But I don't think there's actually any proof that people who get married are any happier. And then there's o like very often the strain of what do you do when your marriage something happens in the marriage, it's ha more difficult to escape from or whatever than if you're unmarried. Um, so. Uh, if you look at this table uh, in the textbook, uh, I think uh, the uh, maybe the individualism kind of plays a role in these numbers. So countries like uh, maybe Korea, Philippines, and uh, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, these countries are maybe a more uh, I don't know, traditional, more uh, religiously, they are more, um, uh, more religious, Catholics, and uh, whereas maybe uh, uh, Western Europe tend to uh, think that marriage is not that important and so on. Okay, so uh, according to this auth the author of this article, Professor Eun Gi Su, uh, his point is that Koreans are changing but still quite conservative and uh, we Koreans think that uh, family and marriage is very important factor for, ver uh, for, for happiness even though the reality uh, is uh, rapidly uh, changing. Uh, I'm not sure about why there is such a big gap between group number one and group number two because maybe one Chinese in your group. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, you kind of make means and maybe the number can would just go up because group number two has higher number, the size is bigger. So probably the, the mean shouldn't be this, uh, the sum of this two divided by two, rather the number should go up because uh, we have higher, bigger than group number two. So it would be like three point, uh, much over three point. As for question number two, that is, uh, it is a right for a couple to live together without intending to get married. That's on page uh, 154, figure number four. Figure number four. Okay, <coughs> according to this uh, national survey uh, on page 154, uh, Koreans and Taiwanese and Filipinos, uh, and also probably a little, uh, slightly less, but still uh, Japanese, these Asian countries uh, are very negative about this statement, right? That is that uh, if you uh, want to live together as a couple, there should be <coughs> like kind of assumption that they would get married. The cohabitation uh, is not really widely supported by Koreans. So uh, Korea is very low, like le around like 2.5 to question number two, right? Uh, and uh, whereas uh, the uh, countries like Sweden or France are like ob above four point something. They think that cohabitation is just a marriage is not an issue, just you can just live with your partner if you want to. That's generally very, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so you're really uh, interested in this issue. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering because for the second question, um, I gave uh, five without having to think a lot. 
Um, maybe there's someone who gave a one or two and would like to elaborate the reasons. I would be really interested because uh, in for number two, uh, I don't, I, I, me personally, I wouldn't have any idea why um, unmarried people shouldn't live together. So if someone is up to it, <laughs> who gave like one or two, I would like to hear the explanation. That would be interesting. From any of the Koreans, uh, because uh, it's not as like low as this national survey, as a national survey, but still you see this uh, compared to international group, especially group number two, is quite low, 3.25. So according uh, to Tilo's request, uh, he wants to hear from some any Korean who has given low score one or two. Uh, so it kind of violates research ethics of anonymity, right? <laughs> but uh, this is not a real survey, so please uh, kindly respond to Tilo's. Uh, okay, you, did you give uh, one or two? Yeah, I gave three. So, but I would like to hear from one or two. <laughs> okay. And is there a Maybe you can uh, give your explanation, but uh, if there's someone who has, has given actually one or two, uh, no? 혹시 1점이나 2점 준 사람 있으세요? 한국 학생들 가운데서? 없네요. 네. Uh, I think majority of the Koreans without thinking, looking at that question, um, to young generation, I think they would hesitate a little bit for, but for our mothers and fathers generation, they would absolutely give like one or two because I think Korea was so for so many years like dominated by this like Confucianism and collectivism and in that culture, like without marriage and living living out together is kind of unimaginable. And I think still, till for the young generation, some people think it is okay, but I think it is not widely still accepted. And some people who even cohabitate each other, they it's really hard for them to like tell their friends like I Yeah, live just without marriage. And a lot of, I think, majority of the Koreans, especially females, um, could not still imagine like telling their mother and father, "Hey, or I live," or friends, right? or friends, and they're kind of afraid about how people would look at them, about their social view, and so I think it's in Korea still, as Professor Kim said, we're kind of conservative. We're being open, but still conservative and not widely accepted. Actually, I gave a two for this question. And um, I think you also have to think about like religious preferences and religious like backgrounds when you're considering this kind of questions. Because for me personally, um, I'm Christian, so like, uh, I don't know. Yes, Protestant. Um, so like, you know, like issues like sex before marriage like and stuff like that, that all like plays into this question as well, so. Yeah, that's why I gave a two. <laughs> so you're Korean American, right? <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I mean, when I was studying in the U.S. for my PhD, uh, I heard I had a friend who was like Korean American, and he was kind of more. Uh, more family oriented, if you will, or he would probably give one or two <coughs> for this question. Uh, his, he was a married uh, m man, but, uh, and he kind of said to me when we had a little drink, he said that like, he feels that he's kind of like conservative, as conservative, more conservative than Koreans in Korea. Because he thinks that he is involved in Korean church in the US and also he kind of inherits the values and norms of his parents' generation. So he kind of always referred to back to his parents who left the U.S. in the nine early 1970s. So in a sense, for his parents, his reference is always like 90s Korean, Korean, so Korean culture of the 1970s. And so uh, their son is actually 
uh, kind of very uh, much educated and socialized in that kind of culture, whereas Korea, since 1970s, has really rapidly, radically changed. So if you kind of compare him with uh, me, he's probably more uh, Korean of the, uh, uh, the older generation. So I don't know, I, mean, this, I thought it was kind of interesting that how he kind of commented on this uh, issue. Okay. We kind of have the same in Austria with, uh, with, uh, okay. with the Korean community in Austria because there's um, um, a lot of meetings and you, um, the younger generation that just came to Austria from Korea, they always say, well, um, the Koreans that lived here since the 70s, they are much more conservative than the ones that live right now in, in Korea. So I think they just stopped um, developing sort of and, and they didn't adapt to the culture in Austria, so they just stayed like how they are. And uh, so you can see that uh, your response, the Koreans' response, uh, the score is much higher than this national survey which, was present which is presented in the textbook. So I guess that kind of shows maybe also generational difference because uh, this survey is for adults who are over 18 to I think 65. So it tends to be more conservative answer because you have older generation, whereas you are mostly in the 20s maybe. Is there anyone who's in the 30s or 40s in this group <laughs> number two, right? So that kind of show that maybe Korean society is changing, changing. So maybe younger generation is uh, tend to have higher score than the average mean for the national uh, population. But also, I must add maybe uh, that uh, maybe even though even the ones who gave high score to question number two as a kind of attitude, but is your attitude really can this be translated into your actual behavior? That's a different issue. So you might say that you strongly, strongly agree with statement number two, saying giving five. But it's a different issue when it comes to whether you actually cohabitate and then maybe uh, tell your friends and or, or like mother and, well, I, I'm a free person and I would like to uh, be a uh, with someone, uh, regardless of marriage or not. I mean, it's, it's a different issue. And I would say maybe many Koreans, even young generation, would be very hesitant. And uh, as a father, if my daughter was in the like early 20s, say that, well, I want to like live, uh, you know, like uh, with a guy that I like, and I would be very kind of reluctant to say, well, no, this is not really, this is not very wise. And like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, she would also consider that, well, this would, could be a very bad reputation or something like that because many, I think, young, even young people think that, uh, you know, getting married is very important and uh, at the time of marriage, this could be a factor, right? So uh, also in that respect, uh, Professor Eun in this article said, well, uh, Koreans are still uh, quite conservative even though it is changing still, comparatively speaking, it is changing. China, 3.3, okay, so, uh, hmm. okay, but uh, two Koreans and one Chinese, so it's very difficult to interpret, yes. Uh, to question number three, people who want children ought to get married. Okay, let's see what it is. It, this is uh, the table, uh, um, figure number five, figure number five on page 154. Uh, and a uh, similar pattern, similar pattern, Korea, Japanese, Taiwanese, and Filipinos, and uh, Czechoslovakia and Poland, they they get very high scores, 2.8, 3.7, and so on. They think that uh, if you want to have children, you should get married. You should get married. So out of wedlock, it's not really... Uh, uh, recognize uh, for Koreans, uh, whereas uh, countries like uh, 
uh, let's see, Portugal is Portugal, West Germany and uh, Britain and Norway, Finland. These countries gave very low score. They said, well, it doesn't really matter, and so on. And as for Koreans, uh, uh, international group kind of I think this kind of like reflects the general trend of Westerners uh, who said that marriage is not that important. You, know, you could have children if you want to, and so on. Whereas group number two was is kind of very uh, uh, conservative, if you will. Right? Let's go for group number one. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Another Chinese factor, <laughs> uh, and in between, in between for uh, uh, the group in Fudan, uh, I wouldn't say it's like Chinese group. It's like Fudan group. Fudan group is like 3.6. It's kind of in between. Okay, all right. So, okay, um, uh, and uh, uh, please come uh, read uh, uh, the uh, come to the class uh, next session. After reading, because we have, I think I have a, uh, assigned uh, three articles from this textbook about uh, various aspects of family and uh, female issue, women issue. Okay, uh, I think time's up for uh, the Chinese student, right? Okay, uh, let me stop here as for Chinese student, and uh, uh, I will see you on Friday in person. And I'll give a lecture, and then uh, we have s we'll have some discussion session. All right? Okay, see you. Okay. Bye, Tian. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>